Welcome back. We're gonna play some casual gaming here and see how it goes. Uh, at one point I did attempt to write a script to play this game. However, um, said script never really took off. So we're just gonna play the game kind of blind. And hopefully this will be a fun experience for everyone. It began like any other morning at Sherry Soda Tower. You rode the elevator up to your Platinum Star restaurant, cook served delicious, and reflected warmly upon your culinary brilliance and managerial prowess. Life was good. Without warning, police surrounded Sherry Soda Tower. It seemed company executives were siphoning funds from the corporation while at the same time incurring a staggering amount of debt which drained the accounts of the tower and all the businesses inside. Everything was put up for federal auction. Cook served delicious was no more. Angry but determined to rebuild, you purchased a modest commercial space on the 52nd floor of the Terrigan Tower, the largest skyscraper in the city, packed with thousands of ravenous tenants. It is here that you will begin a brand new Cook Serve Delicious restaurant, build it back to its former glory, work in other restaurants to rebuild your finances, and expand your culinary knowledge, and cement your legacy as the best chef in the world. Good luck. Alright, let's go through the tutorial, because why not? This is a test kitchen where we can practice a bit. To the left here are the prep stations, where orders can appear as customers arrive. Alright, let's select the order, either uh, by clicking it or hitting one on the keyboard. Alright, so they want queso, cream, jalapeno, and beans. So this is queso, sour cream, jalapeno, and beans. And then click the recipe or hit enter to serve it. Alright. They want a meat patty. Um, I guess one. Meat's cooking. The white timer indicates how long the food has left to cook. Once it turns blue, the food is ready to be prepped. Alright. Um, let's select the order once it turns blue. Don't prep it too early, or you'll have raw meat. Okay. Once it turns blue. Oh, I guess that means now. Alright. So you want the meat, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, which is N, and they want a space to toggle to get to the next page. So they want a regular bun. We serve it. Depending on how accurate your ingredient placement was, and if the food is fully cooked, you get a score. A perfect average or bad rating. Always strive for a perfect rating. It will bring in more customers, income, and bonuses at the end of the day. An average rating doesn't hurt or help you, and a bad rating will decrease customers. Um, that's interesting wording, but sure. At the top of the screen, you'll find holding stations. Uh, holding station 1 through 4. They're the key to making things much easier for you in the restaurant. When you have a large amount of customers, in fact, you don't, if you don't utilize them, the game can become quite difficult. Alright, it has a holding station icon, so select it by holding down tab and pressing 1. Alright, select the pretzel, A for pretzel. Alright, they want classic pretzels. Alright. Pretzels are now cooking, just like the burger. Holding stations are fully automated. Once the food is finished cooking, it will automatically be ready to serve. Well, that's kind of nice. Alright. So, we just wait. Alright, they're now in the holding station. So let's try selecting the pretzel order in the prep station, the one on the left. And one of our pretzels is gone with that guy. Alright, order complete. 
One serving's been deducted. You have three more left to serve. And it'll decrease in freshness as the day progresses. They must be cooked perfectly, or they cannot be served. Alright. But also, like... Yeah. That's pretty nice. There's still items left as side dishes. Chores, drinks, and holding station optional foods you can learn in the extra tutorials. Check out the extra tutorials. Ah, thanks, Chef Risotto. Good luck. Um, if you have money left over, you can... Wait. Uh, or spend your money over the food catalog, start building your own menu. Yeah, that's what I was looking for, is the classic game mode. I know there's the adventure game mode where you go, like, around to all the other restaurants. Okay, can I select this with keyboard? No. O2? To select tutorial 2, we use the mouse. Um, but yeah, I want to play the classic mode, and I hear there's even a way to make... to force customers to be patient. I'd like to try that. Alright, select the holding station. Uh, nugget basket. Dunk it. I'll let that sit. It's now cooking. It can be served once finished. Serve it once ready. Do 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 do. -do. Okay, yeah, but we can get ahead by making the food beforehand. Select the station one and prep chicken nuggets. Uh, oh, turn the page. Oh, that's cool. Holding station required. Holding station optional. Side dishes. Well, we haven't gotten to side dishes yet, but okay. Interesting. Yeah, let's just wait until it's ready to serve. Alright, cool. Spiffy. I mean, I say this now, obviously it's going to get more difficult as we go along. As you can see, you can serve a lot or faster this way than just serving one at a time, but holding station optional foods take up space that you could use for side dishes, or holding station required foods. Alright. All the tutorials kind of up to guide me through things in a logical fashion. Side dishes. Why do I want a side dish? Oh gosh, wow. Customers won't wait for their orders for very long. As you can see, the order that has arrived is quickly going off the screen. If it disappears completely, it will be counted as a bad order. Um, yep. Select Holding Station 1. Side salad with lettuce. Uh, all the above, sure. Uh, adds 15 seconds to the patience meter. You can have up to three unique sides on your menu for an extra 45 seconds of patience. This is huge when you have a huge, inf a large influx of customers. They will always order a random available side dish with the mail. You should try to have at least one in the holding stations. Now, did I miss something there with that tutorial? Was I supposed to like serve this person one of the side dishes? Like, how does this usually work? So I can go here, put in lettuce, all the above. Okay, but I can't actually serve this. This just increases customer patience. Got it. Drinks and delicious. So drinks like side dishes allow you to add in extra income to every entree that goes out the door. Each drink item has a set number of customers it can serve before it needs to be refilled. When a customer orders a drink at a side dish and their entree order is done perfectly, you get the delicious rating. Okay, that's kind of cool. Chores are unfortunate, but you got to do them anyway. And you'll get a sick rating if you don't do your chores. 
Every time you pull up a perfect or delicious order, your buzz increases. Buzz determines how many customers per hour you'll get receiving a day. Buzz can fluctuate throughout the shift for many reasons, so be sure to read up on foods before you purchase them. Um, your restaurant's buzz is not affected by your performance in other restaurants when you're doing chef for hire. Alright, so people don't remember who you are and go back to your restaurant. Uh, keyboard users can fully remap everything. Well, that's kind of nice. Gamepad users... Mouse users try using the scroll wheel to go move to the ingredients page and right-click anywhere... Uh, whoa, right-click anywhere on the screen to cook or to serve a dish. Okay. You can change these behaviors on the map. Um, that's kind of nice. Right-click anywhere to serve a dish? Alright, practice chores. Sure. Alright, we got... Flush... Sanitize. Load dishes, begin to wash. Um, release, unload, and sanitize. Alright. Emergency fire. Got to hold down the fire extinguisher. All right, four rat traps. Cool. Five, a work ticket. Set the trap and sanitize. So that's for roaches. Six, uh, high kick, medium kick, medium punch, low punch. Oh gosh, this is horrible. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. Okay, pests. Clean out the trap. Oh, thankfully... Okay, and then you got it. So this is a fire. So I guess these are all random here. That's pretty cool. I see. Well, I think we've practiced everything. S2 intro. Alright, so we've done the intro. So those are our tutorials. So at this point... Huh. Well? So, okay, we're playing single player mode. Oh, we could actually pick our chef. That's beautiful food. It really is. Um... Wait. So we were Schoiler, but... Oh, I see. There's our avatar in the upper left. That's pretty cool. Icebox. That's quite the name. Um, you got a lot of chefs to select among. I don't think this has any functional bearing. Alright, Salty Baker. He's got, like... I don't know. Looks too serious. Um... Who shall we be today? I kind of wish there were a lot more chefs. Let's play Chef S time. Why not? Alright. So you can work in either your restaurant or anybody else's restaurant. Now, are there other options? Food catalog, emails, designer, tutorials. Designer allows you to configure the look of your restaurant, I believe. But, um, and that's kind of nice. You have welcome to Terrigan Tower. On behalf of Terrigan Management, I'd like to welcome you to our tower. I was sad to read that Sherry, Soda's manage Sherry Soda Management's illicit activities led to your previous business going under. But I'm nonetheless th thrilled to have you here with us. From when bus one business owner to another, let me tell you that starting over isn't the end of the world. I've had my fair share of towers crumble to the ground. Sometimes literally... That's never stopped me from starting over and reaching for even greater success. Best regards, Lindsay Baker, CEO, Terrigan, Terrigan Tower. Oh, that's pretty cool. Nice. Alright, yes, yeah, so we're going to just work at our restaurant. Um, uh, mode... Okay, good. Uh, current mode, classic, standard, stress, zen. 
Zen mode removes all rush hours and allows you to toggle infinite patience for customers. Take it easy and cook at your leisure. Thank you. That's exactly what we need right now. Because, like, this fixes... Yeah, this fixes a lot. Alright. So... Uh, my pantry. Got pretzels, cereal, and steak. Wait. Viewing all foods? Viewing party foods? Breakfast? I see. So we could filter this however we want to filter it. But that doesn't really change what's available to us. So... We're gonna make people what we got. Menu preset A. Menu preset B, C, D, E. Oh, nice! Wait, how many of these do we have? N. That's 13 of these. View equipment. Well, everything's level zero. We could upgrade stuff if we so cared to. We'll save that until... Probably want to get something on our menu first. Um, what's this over here? Mac and cheese is a side. And we got a soda fountain. Nice. Not that we even need sides or anything, because, like, we've toggled infinite patience. It is on. Um, but yeah. Let's make some good food. Alright. Earn a five times combo. Earn two perfect days. Five delicious orders in a single day. And complete a day in CSD. That's our restaurant in any mode. Alright. Prep any food to begin the day. Alright, so we can go holding station one, make some pretzels. Oops. Did I just mess that up? My first order ever. Uh. Wait, whatever. So we made some pretzels and we made some other pretzels. The game recommend. Oh, what's this? I made it wrong. That's delightful. Classic pretzels. Alright. And then we make some more classic pretzels, sure. And then... We make some more classic pretzels, and then... Does the game ask us to make German pretzels? It does. Alright. You want some pretzels? Here you go. Alright. Just to make steak. Take some butter. Take some steak. Let that cook. You just want some pretzels. Here you go. Alright, so I've got to wait for the steak to actually be cooked. Like, the game said I have to wait for this to show up as blue or something. So... We'll wait for some kind of blue indicator to show up. I still don't see one. Alright, cool. So you wanted the steak with... Medium gravy. German pretzels. Trash. In the original game, you had to really work hard to clean up the trash. Here, it's a more continuous activity. Alright, one second. Yeah, okay, everything looks nice on the stream. Just double checking. I do like how it makes you sanitize your hands after such cleaning activities. Now, admittedly, for the beginning of the game, Zen mode might be a little bit overkill. It doesn't even alleviate, like, if you're cooking lots of tricky things at once. Oh, that's interesting. The holding station foods decay after a while. 
So yeah, you still have to be careful making food. Alright, you want gravy. Here you go. Yeah. So, uh, maybe I should decorate this place a bit. I forget if it costs anything to do decoration. I think the decoration feature came out around um, some holiday. Or at least there were some prominent holiday decorate. Uh, there were some prominent decorations related to holiday themes. So I'm not... oh. Yeah, once I've started on this chore, I can't abandon it in the middle of the chore. I think in CSD1 it was possible to abandon a chore mid-activity. Alright, so... Oh, this is ready. Yeah, I do wonder about uh, the freshness of those ingredients that are flashing up there. Does flashing mean I need to restock it or something? Uh, you want fiberblast and milk and blueberries, which is L because all the other letters are taken. Alright, steak, gravy. Nice and simple. I remember playing the original game on a controller, as opposed to using um, the keyboard. Keyboard's actually proving to be a bit easier. Uh, but it requires me to use a keyboard, which is kind of not so fun. Uh, bananas. Alright, so we got to clear holding stations 2, 3, 4. Holding station two, you want German pretzels. All right, we've got to take care of this trap. We've got to take care of this chore. Uh, let's take care of station three. Get some more pretzels down. Station four, want classic pretzels. All right. But yeah, even with customers being infinitely patient, you still have to prepare the food correctly. One trick I eventually learned in the original game is be careful not to start cooking all the meat for all the customers at exactly the same time. Um, because you won't be able to prepare all the foods in parallel. Um, sometimes you might have more effective... You might... Customers will be patient if they see you starting to prepare their dish. So if you start to prepare the dish the instant the customer asks for it, um, then their patience that you could benefit from uh, if you don't get that little bonus. Alright. Uh, for... Okay, you wanted... Oh, gravy. Onions and gravy. Alright. Alright, we gotta clear holding station one. We gotta take care of this chore. Oh, this is the one you gotta kick in. I guess after you've done a lot of... Um, after you've done a lot of garbage collection, then you have to kick in the garbage to fit it into the bin. Oh, now I see in the upper right corner of the screen, there is a clock. Juicy O's, which is J, or Juicy O's. And then you wanted milk with this, and here you go. I see, so that meter in the upper left corner... Um, 
That meter, I guess, is a buzz meter or something. That's not a how close are we to ending the day. It looks like our day is getting close to ending. I like how the background changes. It's nice. It also means I made way too many pretzels today. Thankfully, ingredients don't cost any money once you've already purchased them in bulk. Alright, what time does the restaurant close? Apparently not 9pm, but also apparently nobody's here right now. And am I going to have to do chores after they leave? Also, well, I guess everybody's using the soda machine. That would explain why nobody's asking for a beverage. At 10 p.m.? Finish. Alright. Perfect day complete. Alright. 23 customers served. 2% whatever that little green icon is there. Um, yeah. 178 bucks. 29 things done. 17 maintenance, whatever. I see. Oh, we unlocked small restaurant table. Is this something decorative I can stick? Oh. Table decor. Yes, please. Apple pie. Nice. Alright, so let's go decorate this place a little bit. Now that we've got... You need to earn objects before using the designer mode. Reach level 1 to start unlocking... Okay, so we got some items in our jackpot thing. But we can't actually use them until we reach level 1, because the game doesn't expect us to have any such items. Alright, let's check out our food catalog. Oh! Wait. But that's different than the foods I was capable of putting on the menu, right? Um, prep stations, BD traits, sort default, price, price low, name A to Z, cost high, cost low. Interesting. Um, oh, I see, and you can caption all the things. So chili, chowder, gumbo, soup, etc. Interesting. Uh, show HS stat, holding station stat. Alright, cool. Um, so I might pick something out of the catalog, but I'm just curious... Suppose I do pick my own tower. Um, well, we've only got mac and cheese as a side. Um, wait, I thought we unlocked a thing. Was the thing we unlocked just something that shows up now in the food catalog? Is now being available? I suppose so. Wow, so many things. Oh my goodness. Can I, like, just get dessert items? List, entrees, side dishes, drinks. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, beer. <laughs> Let's practice beer, if it's what I think it is. As fun as that is... Got to be damn careful with that. Uh, I've done that so many times in the original game. I don't need to do that right now. All right, let's check out coffee. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing the best part of the game. House coffee. Brew. Okay, that's kind of nice. All right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I missed the best part of the game here. Beer is one of the most researched beverages on the planet, and is the most commonly studied by individuals consuming several beers in a row. 
this is the quippy writing style that the game studio has. Where, like, they'll make puns everywhere. And then they'll teach you things that are of dubious, um... Well, look, we'll get there. But yeah, it's one of the most researched beverages on the planet. Okay, so this is true. And then they continue into that, um, making a joke out of it by saying it's the most commonly studied by individuals who consume, who, who consume several beers in a row. You can call, like, consuming beer studying it, sure. Dating as far back as 9500 BC, again, that's accurate. And then here we go. Archaeologists believe that beer was key to the creation of civilization itself. Actually, yes. As those who drink it tend to be more jovial, outgoing, and, if consumed in groups, less annoying. However, the aforementioned testing has shown that there is a tipping point to these positive effects when too many beers are consumed, at which point people may stop making sense, thinking rationally, or living. Jeez, that got dark. Many historians attribute the Renaissance to coffee. Um, uh, okay. In the late 14th century, local actor Sharaf was looking for a way to keep himself awake throughout his show's uh, long theatrical run. Hearing coffee beans worked as a stimulant, Sharaf ground and brewed them in an attempt to turn the beans into a beverage. During an intermission one night, Shroff drank the coffee, which historians believe was nearly 30 times stronger than a normal cup brewed today. Primary sources indicate Shroff then completed the final hour of his show in less than 20 minutes, and with the remaining 40 minutes, ran to Italy, created art, lectured in science, and wrote philosophy. While there, Shroff posed for a portrait with Leonardo da Vinci. However, Shroff's inability to stop doing jumping jacks led Da Vinci to paint him in two different positions, in what is now known as the Vitruvian Man. Uh, yeah, I think that's the guy... The Vitruvian Man, I think, is the muscled person who's standing in the middle of a circle who looks like he's doing jumping jacks. Um, Shroff then spread his ideas to the rest of Europe thanks to his hyperactive urge to run really fast. Worried that a caffeine crash was imminent, Sharaf swam the English Channel, invented the steam engine, and ushered in the Industrial Revolution, just in time to let machines do all the work before the caffeine wore off, causing Sharaf to become tired and irritable. Yeah. Yeah, let's get some coffee. Nice. What's this beverage? Iced tea. While hot tea has been enjoyed for over 5,000 years, iced tea is a relatively recent phenomenon becoming popular only after the invention of commercial refrigeration and the resulting abundance of ice and month-old leftovers. Iced tea can be served both sweetened and unsweetened. However, countries which were experiencing hardships when iced tea was first introduced typically prefer sweetened tea. This is true for Thai, Indonesian, and Filipino iced tea, all of which become popular during the 1997 Asian financial crisis. Some critics suggest this rule of thumb is useless as sweetened iced tea is popular in the southern United States. Many locals, however, refute this claim, suggesting there is nothing easy about living in Arizona. Hmm. Alright. Four bucks for iced tea. So much customers have to. Oh my gosh! Passion tea. You have to hit the right button when you start brewing it. When you step away and just let the machine do all the work. Sweet tea. Brew it. Uh, classic tea. Tropics tea. You can tell, like, you're really putting a lot of work into preparing these beverages. Uh, classic tea. So, yeah. That's funny, you go to a restaurant and then like, the machine does all the work. Um, anyways, those are some beverages. I was hoping to find desserts. So these are entrees, side dishes. Um, whatever. Um, 
Yeah, that's beautiful. Anyway, all these foods are so colorful. They really are. Um. Oh, here's some desserts. Wow. Tiramisu. Between the late 1960s and early 1980s, Italy... Oh, this looks too much... Oh, no, I could actually buy it if I wanted to. And charge customers five, a buck, five bucks a piece for it. Italy experienced an extraordinarily divided political landscape along with waves of attacks, which later became known as the Years of Lead. With the nation feeling hopeless, many Italians feared for the future. As a result, a local chef named Sofia Rosso, Russo became determined to bake a cake to bring the nation together. Initially, she tried to create a cake resembling the Italian flag. However, she quickly realized that people shied away from green cakes. Nevertheless, Russo persevered and instead came up with a cake which united ladyfinger biscuits with a smooth filling and named it tiramisu, which means, which translates to pick me up. It was a huge success, and over the decade that followed, tiramisu brought Italians, uh, brought Italians with vastly political different backgrounds together. And that's the story of tiramisu. The, oh wow. Tre leche. The origin of the three milk cake, Tre Leche, is contentious. Spain, Britain, Mexico, and a host of Latin American countries all lay claim to it. However, legend is that the recipe was discovered by accident by a young Nicaraguan woman. As the story goes, a milk factory worker named uh, Yaritza clumsily dropped a sponge cake meant for her date into a vat of heavy cream, again in a vat of evaporated milk then once more dropped it into a vat of condensed milk. With no time to bake a new cake, she then presents, presented the damaged goods to her date, hoping he would find it endearing. He did, and proceeded to eat the cake. Unbeknownst to Yaritza, however, her date was severely lactose intolerant, and proceeded to spend the rest of the night in an unparalleled agony. The two never saw each other once again, and Yaritza, traumatized by the events that transpired, never dated again. Today, the cake is most popular in Latin America. Oh no. That is sad and funny. Alright, so chocolate bean. Wait. Vanilla bean. Chocolate bean. Is that all there is to it? Chocolate. Alright. Against my better judgment, we're going to prepare these all at once in practice mode. I guess it takes forever to prepare. So, is there more to than just letting the dish prepare itself? Here. Do I have to decorate it or something? Alright. Poke holes. Uh, chocolate milk and whip. Poke holes add milk and whip. Uh, I see. That's not bad. Then sixteen dollars each time a customer purchases it. Uh, yeah. Uh. Oh, cu uh, customers crave variety. Food will decrease buzz by eight percent if it's on the menu for more than two days straight. I see. So that's the catch for such a expensive dish. Um. Yeah, here I'm just trying to search for something that I can charge a lot for. Actually, staple foods, healthy eats. Oh, healthy eats is a nice category. Breakfast bonanza, donuts, specialty donuts were invented in 1865, shortly after the Confederate Army surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant. Grant, who had thorough knowledge, of the history of many pastries treats 
understood the significance of donuts and the creation of the United States, and wished to commemorate them along with the historic reunification of the nation. Since donuts up to that point were made with a simple glazed coating which made them almost white in appearance, Grant thought it fitting to mark the country's ramifications by developing new types of donuts that celebrated the diversity of the free Americas through bright colored glazes and toppings such as nuts and, nuts and sprinkles. Though seen as very controversial at the time, Grant would utilize his later status as president to market the creation across the nation and around the world, leading to a surge in their popularity and overall acceptance for treats that look different than what people were used to. So, this produces more trash than most, and uh, customers get tired of seeing it too many days in a row. Oh, unhealthy, I see. It has only one recipe, it's super easy to prepare. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Oh, and they liked having it to go. Well, let's practice, see if we can manage it. Can we manage to make donuts? I don't know, man. Let's find out. Unlike that tiramisu dish, this, uh, this prepares, or unless, unlike Trey Leche, this prepares much, much, much faster. Um. Oh, wow. Oh. Donut icing. Donut icing. Oh, wait, I have to wait for it to finish preparing. Duh. I wonder also, in practice mode, can I make this in a holding station? No. Alright. Yeah, so you don't want to make raw donuts. Um, I see. It's not hard to prepare, but it's not too thrilling either. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to search for something that customers pay a lot for so I can expand my menu faster. Oh, this might fit the bill. Breakfast sandwich. First appeared in 1897 in the U.S. As the pace of life increased, many Americans felt they lacked the time to eat breakfast. Worried that Americans were missing out on the most important meal of the day, entrepreneur William Pressburger invented the breakfast sandwich, allowing individuals to eat on the go. While sales were initially underwhelming, the sandwich took off in 1901 when President Roosevelt was photographed eating a breakfast sandwich while riding a horse, who was also eating a breakfast sandwich. Today, many historians believe that his Roosevelt's love of breakfast sandwiches was so great that he supported the construction of the Panama Canal to allow for easier distribution of the product. Alright, let's take a look, see if this is super hard to make. Ham, egg, croissant. Egg, bacon, cheese, biscuit? Biscuits, I. Sausage, cheese, croissant. Ham, egg, biscuit. Oh, that's kind of cool. Sausage, cheese, croissant. Ham, egg, biscuit. Yeah, okay, that's not so hard to make. I'm gonna regret it, but let's buy it. I think that'd be a nice addition to our rather sparse menu. Um, yeah. So, that's a holding station food. Um, oh, wait, can I see the statistics on various items? Do I not get to see that here? View buzz. Positive buzz earned with this kind of menu. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, I can't exactly read that text. 
I don't suppose, like, the game has settings that I could increase the font size or something similar here. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Um, yeah, so I think we're just going to go back to gameplay. Back to campaign mode, to the tower. These are our foods, simple as they are. Let's start a new day. All right. Yep, we want to get a 7x combo and otherwise just do awesome. Prep any food to be in the day. Okay. German pretzels. I'm amused that I don't really get to choose which sort of pretzel that I'm preparing. But at least uh, the game has me prepare a combination of different things. They're not all German pretzels. Juicy O's, milk. And blueberry. There you go. Sausage. Cheese. Awesome. Oh, wait. So we put that, we assemble the sandwich. And then we cook it? Is that how this works? Cheese biscuit. There you go. So our goal is to get at least a 7x combo today. Can we do it? Three sevenths of the way there. Four sevenths of the way there. Oh, I see. The blue is actually indicated with a blue check mark, too. Man, nobody wants my. Sa oh, it's raining. I look forward to being able to use table decor. This place is quite drab. are really damn quiet. Let's check out... You wanted Fiberblast. I forget if this is just a, something that happens later in the game, but at some point, like, the recipes are not super obvious the way some of these are right now. We really have many different ingredients that all start with the same letter. And you have to keep them all separate in your head. I haven't checked, but like, each time I serve a thing, it should also have a unique name for... Alright, you want a medium kick, low kick, power kick... Oh, this is nice. That's nice. All right, we got our 7x combo. Yeah, I appreciate in Zen mode it tells me exactly how to defeat that person. Uh, but yeah, I guess when there's poor weather out, not as many people come by. So it's a quieter day, but we did get our 7x combo. So hooray for that. No, I was told this tower was full of ravenous employees. Like, people who want to eat. 
Where are all these ravenous people? I'd like to start on ticket four while this is in progress. In the other game, I think you were able to alternate between tasks and take on some tasks simultaneously. need to fill all the holding stations unless we're gonna get way more people here and we just there's no way I am curious how many hours those pretzels will be good for like is somebody gonna be okay eating like six hour old pretzels Bacon. So this is called the Egg Deluxe. Each of these is giving you a unique name. I think if you're in the middle of prepping one food, you could still serve a different food that's ready. You just can't prep the other food. That looks so good. Kind of alarming how much is caught in the pest trap. Egg and ham and biscuit. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait to get to level one. And then we'll be able to actually decorate this place. Uh, here you go. Now you can only use this Zen mode in your own restaurant if you go out into the world to the other restaurants. That's not been implemented yet. There's no way at other restaurants to like force customers to be patient. Um, yeah, gosh, this place needs to be decorated. Also, I'm kind of tempted. I'd like to see some of my OCR attempts at this game um, to automate the gameplay. I'd like to see those actually work. Even if, like, not everything's about it is perfect. It could be fun to, like, have an agent that assists with the gameplay. So I don't have to type everything. I also found it interesting that in the intro sequence, um, they mention your managerial prowess, but then they also manage, they mention that management put the entire uh, tower into debt. Like, obviously it's not your fault, but I would also question your managerial prowess if, uh, oh, it's the first time we've had to serve those.
finish. Another perfect day. A lot of that confetti didn't land on the screen. Something's up with my screen resolution confusing the game. Alright. Odessa, 1883. I think that's a famous painting. Colored wall? Yeah, we could use a colored wall. Use any colored wall, really. Fish sticks to Marco. So, yeah, here's like a fish that's on a plaque. There's so many things we could do once we could just decorate the place, but since we're not at level one, we don't have permission to decorate. Um, get 892 bucks in our pocket. So I guess we'll pick something else out of the food catalog, just for variety's sake. Staple foods. Right. Link station required. Uh, All-time classic, healthy staple. Never suffers from menu rot. Customers love. Right. Archaeo. Okay, soup. Archaeological evidence suggests soup was likely first consumed 20,000 years ago in China. In the 1970s, soup was routinely served as a starter in restaurants. In 1983, however, a number of reports revealed that those who ate soup as a starter were less likely to order dessert, as the large volume of liquid was causing patrons to feel full too early into the meal. As such, restaurants have reduced the portion size of soup when served as a starter, with many restaurants ceasing to serve soup altogether. These restaurants have since donated their stock to local homeless shelters, who, where soup lines continue to this day. Alright, well, I can't afford the item, but that's the story. Yeah, I can't afford any of these, apparently. 500. Okay, I could afford this. What's this last... Pest fest. Um, Alright, we got more pest chores, but fine. Eggs ready for entree servings, including scrambled. These are griddle eggs. Traditionally, scrambled eggs were made by whisking eggs in a bowl with milk, then lightly cooking the mixture in a pan. According to recent studies, however, most scrambled eggs are made by people who have failed to correctly flip an omelet. While contentious, some food critics believe scrambled eggs, made from failed omelets, should instead be called scromlets, as they lack the soft, fluffy texture of true scrambled eggs. Opponents to this idea believe that freedom and spontaneity are the true attributes of the recipe, and as long as the dish features eggs which are to a certain degree scrambled, they can be classified as scrambled eggs. Or scrambled eggs. A new $11.6 million study by the U.S. government was commissioned in 2029, however, as of writing... Wait, was commissioned in 2029. However, as of writing, it has yet to provide a clear definition for scrambled eggs. Alright, let's see if this, like, is impossible to prepare. Uh, sunny side up. Scrambled. All right, that's all there uh, we have to do to master this thing is pick the right one and wait for it to cook. And sunny side up and scrambled both start with us, so make sure to push the right button. Uh huh. -huh. All right, scrambled. Yeah, so I can't put that into a holding station, of course, but. That's really funny how easy it is to mess that up. And we just know I'm going to cry because I'm going to mess it up, but we're going to purchase everything. We need some adventure. But also, yeah, it's good to vary our menu a bit so we're not making the same thing every day. This is something they don't want to see every day in the menu, so we're going to switch it up. Uh, pretzels are still a nice staple. Let's put steak here. We don't have any other sides to pick among, and we want to have... Oh, we could prepare coffee. Let's make coffee. It's cold today, so coffee's a good idea. Yeah. I'm smart. I read the weather. Maybe. 
right. Nine X combo, four perfect days, five delicious orders in a day, and complete a day in the tower in any mode. All right, and then there's milestones, and performance, and stuff. Um. So some classic pretzels and some German pretzels. That's a nice little tune. But yeah, once we hit level one, we could actually decorate this place, and it won't look so crappy. Scrambled. C is scrambled. S is sunny side up. Don't mix the two up. But also you could remap the key bindings so neither one of them would be us. That would be the smart thing to do. But that feels like cheating. Woo! Level up! Finally we get to decorate this... tower... room... cell. Cell is probably most accurate. Oh, I forgot! Because customers are infinitely patient, I could take all day to serve their orders and they wouldn't mind. I've never exploited that. That seems like a really funny thing to exploit. Um, so you just let them sit there, and you're just like, nope, I'm not cooking today. And at the very end of the day, they've waited all day for you to prepare something, because you're that legendary of a chef. But yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that breakfast foods are only good until, what they say, 11? They were only in high demand until then, and then they're just in normal demand. It feels like something's missing there. Okay, you wanted scrambled eggs. Yeah, also, like, I'm debating, um, onions and gravy. I'm debating, do I want to upgrade some of my equipment so the chores aren't so arduous? Sunny side up. Because every time a chore appears, there's a risk that I might hit the wrong button. So far I've been pretty good about it, but I could always hit the wrong button. Decaf. Oh, well, that's evil, that you could accidentally serve the wrong one. Also, I wonder if... Well, no, I already shut down my drink station, but... I wonder if customers get tired of having the same drinks... Um, Day after day. I mean, to me, I would assume coffee would be a staple that they'd expect to be there every day, but perhaps that's not the case.
All right, shift one, tab one rather, tab two. So soon we'll get to decorate this hellhole. At least the view out the windows looks nice. But yeah, it'd be cool if like the entire room looked so much better. I wonder what M gravy is. I initially thought it was medium gravy, but I guess it's like mushrooms and gravy or something. It's gravy with some kind of ingredient in it. Uh, I wonder if certain foods cause customers to use the restroom more. I assume so. I can see smoke clouds from out the window. Or that's either clouds or smog or something. I wonder if some restaurant on some other floor had a fire. If so, I don't see more customers diverting here. Oh yeah, that does look like mushrooms and gravy. Can't say I've ever had that. Can we have one more perfect day? If I don't accidentally serve food before it's ready. I think we can. Onions and gravy. Right, this has to get done. This chore has got to get taken care of. Man, it's quiet. And again, I know the main game mode features tons and tons of customers um, coming at a visiting at an alarming pace. But I don't like the fact that like customers are so impatient most of the time. I know. Like, it's kind of the core game mechanic for viewers' purposes, that like they want to see you panic, they want to see you make mistakes. It's more of an adventure if you have to work hard at it. Um, well, everybody's ordering the decaf coffee. Um, wonder why. After this day ends, we'll get to decorate. Maybe we'll do, I don't know, one or two more days here. Maybe the decor will be inspiring somehow. Well, it said finish. But this bum here ordered something that takes forever to cook right in the last few minutes of the day. Kudos to him for doing that, and but uh, shame on our kitchen for allowing such an order so late in the day. So now 11 p.m., dude. I hope you're happy. Take it and go. <laughs> Another perfect day. 
3% positive something something. I still can't read that. Still the confetti falls on the left side of the screen instead of down the middle. So there might be some resolution thing. Colored wall. There's another colored wall. Restaurant chairs. Okay, that's kind of nice. That beats folding chairs. Small restaurant table. It's kind of eloquent. Australia, 1968. Wall restaurant booths. Decorative columns. A pink decorative column. Oh, that looks cool, but doesn't really fit at all. New Chef for Hire events unlocked. So now I could go to other Chef for Hire things instead of visiting my own restaurant. But these out in the wild blue yonder are kind of brutal. I don't know. They take more focus. So let's see if we can make this place look a little bit nicer. Welcome to Designer. All right. So floors, windows. Hang on. Uh, wait, can I go back? Create windows. Window preset one. Wait. Create windows. Window preset, oh. I can select among all the preset windows. I kind of like this one, but do we have other ones that look nice? <laughs> That's kind of like a gym. That one doesn't look terrible. Some of these... Oh, that looks kind of unique. Wait, is there one that's just like one big window? That looks beautiful. Yeah, let's do window preset 25. Alright, carpet, hard surface. Carpet? Do we have any carpets? No, we got hard surface one floor number 29. That's all we got there. Uh, walls? Well, we don't need no walls now that we got a window. Uh, lighting. Ceiling lights and table lights, wall lights, global lighting. Um, wait. Do we have to have ceiling lights? Oh wow, the place got darker when I removed some lighting. Wall lights, global lighting, ceiling table lights. Oh, LED lighting. That's kind of a neat effect. LED pinned, super dimmed pin lights. I kind of like that. Jeez. Some of these are so intense. Ceiling fixtures. Fluorescent. Ugh. Simulated daylight. Um, simulated daylight's a bit intense, too. Let's go back through these. No lighting. Super dimmed LED pin lights. That's a bit too dark. LED dimmed pin lights. That could work. Mm -hmm. Full strip dim lighting. Fluorescent lamp. Simulated daylight. Uh, so I think like number three here. Or number two, the LED dimmed is okay. Here, I think the tables are too bright. Here, I think this is a decent ambience. Alright, so... Yeah, let's stick with that. Objects. Booth dividers? Furniture, fountains, seasonal Christmas extras. Seasonal Halloween! 
Yeah, let's just stick a tree right there. Alright, and that jack-o'-lantern, I don't know, over here. Uh, wait, can I not move that? Oh, center click to delete. Then I could stick some Christmas things over here. Uh, there we go. What else can we do? Ah, let's have a snowman hanging out. That's beautiful. Uh, oh yeah, Christmas tree. Uh, kind of occludes the view. Alright, um... Yeah, that works. Alright, and then we got Halloween, we got that big scary tree. I got a cat over here. Just to make you really question what's going on. Um, a pumpkin balloon? I guess? I don't know. Not feeling it. Doesn't quite fit in. Extras. Yeah, whatever this balloon is. Oh, that's not bad. There's not really much room for it, but... Um, oh, other colors kind of look nice, though. Yeah, that kind of fits with stuff. Uh... Cyan balloon? Sure. Stuck in the tree? It's intriguing. Okay, we got all these other balloons. What's this? Yeah, looks okay. Oh. I see, so that button removes the thing. So those are all our extra objects that we didn't need at all, but somehow actually were necessary. Okay, and then we have this enormous pillar to stick it out of nowhere. Yeah, that fits. Let's keep that. <laughs> Trash cans. Oh yeah, and then this thing. Sure. Perfect. We have a very distinct look for our restaurant. Alright. And nobody's gonna... <laughs> Anybody who visits this restaurant is not gonna understand. That's okay. Uh... Let's see. Choose slot. Whatever. Um, nice. Yeah, so I was saying how we needed to decorate this place. I think we've decorated it. Well, what better way to celebrate that than... Um, let's, let's do another day of business in our tower. Uh, we got 611 bucks to do something with. Let's check our emails. Oh! I have not been checking our emails. Thank you for subscribing to the National Arts and Historical Preservation Society. Did you know that under 87... Per, or did you know that 87% of children under the age of 12 have no idea that the United States once had 50 stars under the flag? With nine of those states lost to war and floods, now is the time to preserve their rich heritage by showcasing some artifacts and important memorabilia from across the nation. We'll periodically be sending your establishment cook serve delicious restaurant historical items from across the former and current states. Thank you to thank you for your generous donations, and we hope that you will give these items the home they deserve. Alright. Please note that we are running very low on printer paper. Someone decided to print out a few hundred copies of a photo of Leo as a child naked in a bathtub. Leo, you may want to wish you may want to grab the stack of copies in the break room before anyone else does when you come back from vacation, if any are left. And please organize your workload better before handing it off to me at such short notice. Alright, we read that. 
The stage has been set. The pieces are in place. The rules have been laid out. The cows have been fed. The broccoli has been stacked in piles of three. The circles have been stretched into ovals. The meals have been ordered raw. The air has been exhaled in spurts. The student has been taught while blinded. The ring has been entered back to front. The hole has been widened with a spring. The colors have been swapped and then swapped back again. The deck has been scrubbed counterclockwise. The beard has been combed with a fine tooth. The price has been paid tenfold. The eggs have been arranged in order of largest to smallest. The game is ready. It's your move. Okay. Hey everyone, thanks for attending Leo's surprise party last night. As you know, Leo's an introvert, so he loved being surprised with dozens of people like that. The best part was when we made him give a speech. He loved it. And Leo, try not using my try not using my eraser in the future. Otherwise I might throw you another surprise party. I've seen you at the library a couple times now, and yes, I see you. Even when you're hiding with your head buried in a book or under a literal pile of books, I see you. I've been thinking about you for some time, and I want you to transfer my thoughts from fiction to non. If you see this, and your favorite Dewey Decimal class is also 301, it was meant to be. Yep, Library Lounge. To help raise awareness about the lack of food choices present, the lack of food choices people in rural areas have, I've decided to eat and drink nothing but hummus for the next 30 days. If you'd like to sponsor me, message ASAP. Hi all, just a friendly reminder not to refill the salt and pepper shakers with coriander. Dennis accidentally ingested a huge amount last week, and he still can't get the taste of blood and rusty pipes out of his mouth. Regards, Leo H. Dennis, it might be an idea not to use someone else's coffee mug. They might get angry and buy coriander in bulk for sweet, sweet culinary revenge. Do people keep asking you what's wrong? Do you, keep, do you always feel upset or irritated? Just laugh it off. See that duck over there? Laugh the duck. Eating a delicious meal? Laugh the meal. Ignoring a homeless person on the street? Laugh at the homeless. Being accused of a double homicide you didn't do? Laugh at the police. There's no end to the amount of thing you can't laugh at. It doesn't even have to be funny. Just laugh at it, and in no time you'll start feeling better about the terrible life you live. The easy way to improve your mood. Have you tried this popular new thing called giving up? You should look into it. All the pe cool people are doing it. Don't concern yourself with my motives in the matter. Just try it out for yourself and see the difference it makes in your life. Besides, it's way easier than not giving up. All right, that's the wisdom of email right there. Um, so I was actually looking for food stuff. I guess we're going to go back to the tower. Um, and we could look at our equipment and stuff. I, I can't afford to upgrade any of these. But I was hoping to find some kind of menu thing, you know? Where is the... Oh, there's the food catalog. Alright. Staple foods, healthy eats. Uh, let's see. Are any of these look easy to prepare? Chicken. Alright, I can't afford it. But of all the commonly eaten parts of the domesticated chicken, chicken breast is among the most popular. Chicken breasts are used in a variety of dishes, as well as considered their own dish when baked, boiled, or fried with various seasonings and spices for additional flavor. Historically, the chicken breast is relatively mundane, having been discovered by early humans who were believed to have been very surprised that they were tasting edible meat between the sea of feathers they had previously assumed made of 100% of the chicken's biology. Chickens are most delicious when tenderized with a tenderizer hammer, is hitting the birds with other tools or weapons, such as a sword, only makes them more angry. Nice reference. Really nice reference. Alright. Um, okay, I can't afford this either. Oh, we'll come back to some of this other stuff when we can afford it. Smoothies. Yeah, so these increase in price as we go. Um, breakfast bonanza. What's this? 
French toast. Uh, another holding station food. That's not bad. Um, it's outside of my price at the present, but let's read it anyway. French toast, also known as pain perdu, lost bread, first appeared in the Middle Ages. To do a combination of record food wastage and malnutrition amongst the lower class, the French government passed legislation making disposal of the food illegal. With the ban on food disposal in full swing, restauranteurs were puzzled for what to do with stale bread. Local restaurants came together and concluded by cooking stale bread with curdled milk, they'd be able to sell expired food for gourmet prices. The research paid off, and in the coming months, French toast became a hit. Hoping to recreate the success of French toast, restaurants have attempted to serve patrons expired chicken covered in moldy cheese. It was less successful. Um, all right. <sighs> Oatmeal. Oh, we can actually afford this. Um, doesn't... Looking for something that Kondo would say sparks joy. Like, coffee is kind of nice. Did I just click oatmeal? That is oatmeal. The picture looks nice, but it's oatmeal. Um, cinnamon buns, again, outside of my range. Lots of red markers next to it. Rainy bites. Um, wow, so many things. So many things outside of my price range. Alright, whatever. Warm eats. Um, what is this? Gumbo. I have memories with gumbo. Let's not think about it right now. Late night meal. Alright, now we're talking. A oh, man, definitely outside of the price range, but look at all these positive things on it. An instant food. Oh, complex bits is kind of sad. We're going to have to get it someday, but it's kind of complex. Burgers, again, out of the price range. Yeah. Latte. Well, it's kind of nice that pretzels are a late night meal. Cold treats. Oh, this is the category I was searching for earlier on when I was looking for desserts. Oh man, all these things not in my price range. That's sad. So I was looking to add one more thing to my menu, but. Oh, there's even better category of desserts. But, yeah. Expensive. <laughs> Even glazed donuts are more than I have money to purchase the recipe for. Super meat. Yeah. Alright. Seafood stadium. Stadium food. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Party food. Now we're talking. Um, but yeah, all this stuff is more than 611 to go. Oh, that's something we should definitely look into at some point. Um, okay. Well, let's read this, even though we're not going to get it. <laughs> worm eats. Yeah, that's exactly what it said. Worm eats. Wok dish. Beef and pork. Wok dishes originated in China are most common throughout Southeast Asia. The tossing action commonly associated with wok dishes was utilized when live cows were first used in beef wok dishes in an attempt to keep them from escaping. Eventually it was determined that beef wok dishes would be much easier to create if smaller portions of non-living cows were used on smaller skillets. However, the tossing action was so tied to muscle memory that it continued to be used in the creation of the smaller dishes by chefs who were incapable of lifting or moving a skillet without performing the action. That's the story of wok dishes. Don't question it. Don't question the decorations either. Alright, here we go. Um, so... Now this says holding station on it. it says HS. 
And yet, I never saw an option to, like, involve it in the holding station in any way. But yeah, we're gonna swap out steak for breakfast sandwiches. And we have nothing we can swap out there, and... I'm gonna put the soda fountain back, because it is sunny. Here we go. Eleven X combo is the goal. All right. Well, we'll keep going. Prepare any food to start the day. Oh, I could actually make a lot of fun things here. Wow, I didn't realize that. All right, German pretzels. Um, German pretzels. Oh. Oh, nice. Wow. Oh, right. This has to be ready before I can serve it. Yeah, I didn't realize how easy it could be to prepare some of this stuff. See, they like it. I'm surprised I had to make two things of German pretzels, though. But yeah, in Zen mode. The nice thing is these customers are infinitely patient, so I don't have to worry about messing that up. I wonder if customers ever get tired of the decor, or if they just don't notice it. Oh, I see! They keep taking the macaroni with them, and that's why they're super happy. That's nice. I don't know if that results in more pay or tips or something at the end of the day. Oh yeah, the upper right corner shows the total tip given. Nice. We should have figured that out earlier. Also note that like in the upper left corner where it says perfect combo, if you mess up a ditch, you could choose to hold on to that dish until the end of the day. And that way the customer won't be mad with you until they receive their dish. I may or may not have done that with the original game. May or may not have done that in order to get more perfect combos and win bets and such. Sadly, there's no way to undo a dish once you've started it and messed it up. Although, I, th I think it would be interesting if they let you do that. They would just delay the order. It would be interesting if they just let you attempt things as many things as were ne was necessary to get it done. But yeah, when the food in the holding station expires, um, then you have to clean up the holding station. 
think station three is empty. Wait. Oh yeah, let's add some... This way we don't have to think about which dish to prepare. Get all kinds of eggs ready. Uh, oh. Right. My holding station dish was not ready yet, so this customer is getting some fresh scrambled eggs. Classic pretzels. And you will make German pretzels. Dish or two there is some cleanup work. It's been done. Yes, I wonder... Sausage... I wonder if sometimes I should just wait until the holding station dish is prepared before trying to serve an order. It's like if somebody says I want eggs, and we say, oh, hang on, we're preparing eggs right now, be patient with us. Uh, I think they can, they can be patient with us. Yeah. Who know? Who knew that macaroni would be such a hit? I still want to use different tables and not folding chairs. I haven't been able to figure out how to swap in other chairs yet. But man, it'd be nice to have a restaurant that looked just a touch more classy. Especially because we unlocked a table and we unlocked some chairs. I just didn't see them available when we were decorating the room. But maybe I'll try again after today. Ham, egg, isket. Also, like you can see throughout the day, the background changes. The lighting in the restaurant itself maybe mildly changes, I don't know, but definitely out the window things look different. So each one of those um, biscuit foods um, breakfast sandwiches. It has a different name, and so if you were to recognize the names, that could maybe help you prepare the foods faster. But each time I'm having to read the recipe because I can't remember any of the food names. Gambled. Well, I don't know if people are gonna order. Uh, yeah, let's prepare some pretzels in case they do order them. Although there's not much time left in the day. Uh, let's see. Tap three. 10 o'clock ends the day. Yep. Oh, wow. Well, that helped us level up faster, too. We'll take it. Yeah, reading the directions is one thing. 
Actually, following them is another. Yeah, it's nice getting tips this time around. So we got more art. The British. We got hard floor. We have wall restaurant booths. That doesn't look bad. Standard object. Standard object. I'm not sure what this object is. Item number 1154. But yeah, okay. Art foods. Ooh, nice. A pizza collection. Get more booths, more booths, restaurant table, nice. Can I pick a different table, perhaps? Uh, so there is designer mode, which does allow me to create windows, walls, lighting, objects, counter, seating, counter. Bar counter. Oh, this is the bottom counter on this screen. Well, we've got bar counter 10 and no options. Seating. Booths, wall booths, small tables, tables. Wait. Uh... I mean, I'd like to stick a table right there, but there's no room for it. Uh... Small tables. That kind of fits somewhere. Not sure where. Oh, it definitely doesn't fit there. Are you kidding? We just got folding chairs. Wall booths. Alright, this doesn't fit anywhere either, right? Yeah. Um. And you could stick this somewhere, but like. It's on top of things that are already in the restaurant, which I seem to lack the ability to move or remove. Uh, seating art. People, places, foods, abstract, other. Um, okay, so they have ads for all the restaurants. Sprays, historical. Um, <laughs> okay, yes, that's a historical artifact, the spoke and wheel. Uh, large objects, objects, got the fish, um, not sure where to stick it. It's a flying fish. Yeah, that looks kind of okay. Abstract art. Food art. So we can hang a pizza on our window. Uh, I don't know about this one. That kind of fits there. But, like... Man. The screen is getting really crowded. I like this frame, but I wish I could stick the other picture in it. Um, people. The British. Yeah, let's stick that under our little sombrero thing, I guess. Uh, that, that blocks the view. Even more than my ridiculous decorations have intentionally blocked it. Um, I don't know, man. Doesn't look like anything. Oh, we could have multiple fish things. What is this? Big's Burger. Yeah, stick that right on the window. Block the entire city. The World Tour. Alright. I think we've done enough a little decorating there. Sad, I can't seem to change the room layout very much. Edit, create, choose slot, exit designer, grid mode. Mm, that's no fun. Right, create? Create, no. I think create is just add items into your room. Alright, 
We'll exit the designer. And maybe suffer one more day in our tower. Oh wait, we have enough to actually perhaps acquire another food. Which one do we want? I don't know. I was thinking... Late night... No, I was thinking cold treats or desserts. Because over here, it's summertime. Oh, creme brulee. Can't afford that. That would have been nice. Um, it's kind of a mess. I want something that doesn't have menu rot, so customers don't mind if I serve it over and over again. And become actually somewhat good at serving it. Party foods, right. No, but there's also category to-go foods. Um, are all the to-go foods, like, ridiculously overpriced? 1125, 1100, 750, small custom sub. Um, I guess all the easy to prepare things are kind of a mess. I just want something that has all the green icons and is super cheap to purchase the recipe for. Which is basically nothing. A salad we can't even get. Oh man. It would have been nice to get salad though. It's just outside of our range. Look at all the green things. Chef's specialty. Oh. All time classic. Alright, so add three of these foods to your active menu for an instant 12% buzz boost. Get more people to show up. Yeah, salad would be a nice thing to add. Sushi, it's beautiful. That's also 1800 for the recipe and ingredients. Uh, what's this? Organic salad? What? Okay. Oh, goodness. That's kind of funny. Um. Hmm. Man, all the cool stuff is, like, not in my price range. Shish kebab. Ooh. Uh, prep types. Holding station optional. Sushi is holding station optional. That's kind of nice. You just like put sushi in a holding station. Customers come by and like, hey, I want a sushi. And you say, like, oh, here you go. Take this. And you don't have to worry about preparing the right one. Or do you? Um... So, basically, for my budget, there's nothing good I can get. Um, storms today? I don't know if coffee is going to attract more or fewer people. Sides, we don't have a lot. Uh, cereal, steak. Um, hmm. I mean, we're gonna serve the same thing as yesterday, I guess? Hmm. Uh, well, this doesn't change the rate at which our view buzz. Yeah, okay, whatever. I guess this will be fine. Um... Yeah, that's not hard to make. Let's start a new day. Okay, start the day by preparing any food. We're gonna prepare classic pretzels. 
We're gonna prepare more classic pretzels. We're gonna prepare macaroni. And prepare lots of eggs. Perhaps I should have done the eggs first because those take a while to prepare. Again, I guess I hope people get the right pretzel type, because I don't have a lot of holding stations open. Would be nice to get another holding station. Also, who gets steak first thing in the morning? I'm not judging, but I'm judging. I guess customers are getting to-go foods because um, they can't stand the sight of this place. It's pretty funny. Oh, this is ready. Interesting how various, uh, oh, ran out of eggs, right? Oh crap, this is not ready yet. My mistake. I meant to hit holding station three. Instead, I hit recipe three. Um, so that ends my perfect day. Could have been worse, but um, yeah, I gave them undercooked food. I'm distracted. And that's what I get for doing too many days in a row. I wonder if the music selections affected in some way by all the various items I decorate the room with that could be... I doubt that the developers thought of that, but that could be funny. They did. Right, so we want to prepare holding station for with macaroni. I uh, gotta do some chores. Uh, so many chores. I'm starting to think that putting pretzels in the holding station, even though it's efficient, um, leaves me less room to put other items in the holding station. And maybe on a day like today, people just don't want pretzels. Or at least not as much as they want other foods. Holding stations. Uh, okay, we finally are allowed to prepare German pretzels. Oh! I forgot to let the food cook. I am not doing well on letting foods cook today. I'm thinking about 
just, I don't know, current events in our nation, current events locally. <sighs> the reason we play games is to try to take our mind off of such things, at least temporarily, and enjoy things for what they are. But yeah, it's hard to forever be distracted. Even so, it's kind of nice being able to put the Halloween tree, the Christmas tree, this balloon, some other decorative items, just stuff that you'd never expect to find together. It's all in the same room. There's a certain humor to that. Right, so we only want to... Oh, the other thing that might be confusing me is the lightning in the background. I'm confusing that with the flash or the food is ready. Welcome. I did actually make an attempt a couple years ago, or I borrowed somebody else's attempt. But the only way I would have any fun with it, in my opinion, is if it did optical character recognition. And I couldn't find a suitable OCR engine that worked on these fonts. So I've eventually just given up and said, you know, we're just going to play the game. And it's a huge mistake because I'm making all kinds of errors today. <laughs> but, I mean, I could always make a bot later. Wait. Oh, yeah, there's still time left in the day. Uh, I should have started that dish, though, because it's going to take a while to cook. I should have started that before I started the holding stations. Ah, you do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it's... As fun as it is to produce your own projects, often, um, if you can start from somebody else's project, you'll get a lot farther. Or, if you're, like, if you have the free time to actually focus on one project at a time, uh, you could actually get decently far with that. Yeah, so this morning, um, some uh, amateur players that play Shogi in these online tournaments uh, were playing against Seven Don professional uh, Katagami, so let's say. Um, just this absolute uh, giant of a Shogi player had volunteered to play. Uh, handicap games against folks who had won tournaments. It was exciting to see that. So, that said, I think sometime next month or something they'll be starting a new Shogi tournament. Oh man, this dude got his order in right before the restaurant closed. Ah, I actually didn't perform in it. I got to... Well, I'm sorry, I did perform in a tournament before this most recent tournament, but, like, this morning's event I wasn't part of. I also did not participate in the preceding tournament. Um, so, like... Um, yeah. I think I'm playing... there's... how many tournaments are there now? I'm in the middle section for the next tournament. Um, and I think I'm probably at the bottom of the middle section, so... It's gonna be brutal, but we'll see how I can manage. Uh, yeah. So here I had a couple average orders because I served raw food. Uh, it was partially cooked, but 
Honestly, I'm not that happy with it. Some customers are super excited now that I'm serving side dishes with my main dishes. Uh, yeah, my main combo today was 14, so... I mean, hey, that's a record, right? So, oh, for a 14 combo, I get a wall. Yay! You get another wall. Small restaurant table, but there's no place in my restaurant to stick tables unless I can get rid of their existing tables. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I wish this game had an autoplay mode, like a demo mode, anyway. Something where you could just sit back and relax and enjoy it. Let's check out the rest of these messages. Alright, Terrigan Tower Mail, their equivalent of email. Nap slot for 665 French horn. Found in the ruins of New Orleans, Louisiana, in surprisingly pristine condition. Likely belonged to a highs Merther, whose number one single, My Baby's New Glow, hit the top of the charts as people related to struggles of post-nuclear fallout blowing across the USA. Interestingly, this French horn has only retained half of its initial radioactive exposure. Do not remove from glass. Alright. Um, kick it go. Update. Lots. Lost of labor. Holy cow, we're fully funded. Thank you to everyone for believing in the lost of labor and donating to this amazing idea. When we launched this campaign half an hour ago, we had no idea it would take off like this. Reaching 100% funding so quickly has got to be some kind of a record for a goal of this magnitude, and we have each and every one of you awesome backers to thank. The campaign goes on another 29 days, 23 hours, 30 minutes though, so this train is far from stopping. Okay. Um, I don't understand that's in reference to some other email. Hey everyone, I want to thank you for all the hard work you're putting in. The game is really shaping up nicely thanks to those 17 hour days, and if we work just a little harder, we'll be able to ship it in no time. Unfortunately, it's been brought to my attention that some of you have experienced deaths of loved ones. Well, I'm sorry to hear this. You won't be given time off, as you'll have to grieve, as you'll have some time to grieve once Shadows of Francisco, Shadows of San Francisco ships. On an unrelated note, websites relating to employee rights have been blocked on our network. Best, Brett, founder of Team Turmoil Games. All right. An electrician's on his way to deal with the buzzing and flickering of the office lights around Leo's desk. Leo, please remember to turn off all the office lights when you're last to leave at night. Teach me how to walk, then watch as I run away. That ought to teach you. That's not really haiku. Did you see that cloud out west? I think it looks like Bryson. Ah, I can't even deal with the gods. Thinks he's dreamy. All right. Nap slot 966, tricked out rims. Hey look, I'm using that to decorate my space. Found the ruins of Los Angeles, California, likely part of a 2011 Modesta uh, Shikan Turbo. Before the auto market collapsed in 2026, many car enthusiasts loved tricking out their rides with fun accessories that didn't necessarily make cars drive faster, but may looked much cooler in appearance. This piece, known as a cap, was used to trick out a vehicle's tires, and is thought to have been one of the most high-end options, as it's constructed out of shiny aluminum, rather than plastic or wood. That's clever. Team Turmoil Crunch Time. Hi everyone, I'm really impressed with your progress on your open world shooter, Shadows of Francisco. You've all worked incredibly hard over the past five years. And I appreciate each and every one of you, and if things occasionally get a little out of hand, and some chairs get thrown around. Ah, memories. Unfortunately, you haven't been working hard enough, so we're going to start crunch time. I know it's not ideal, but it's a fact of life. And to those who say, but why would we bear the brunt of management's failure to schedule properly? I say, remember, you're lucky to be here. Our new official work hours will be 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Please note, the hours 5 p.m. onward will be unpaid. Also, all you'll be required to work Saturdays and Sundays. Like I said, this isn't ideal, but if you'd all be worked harder, if you'd all had worked harder, none of this would have happened. Best, Brett, co-founder of Team Turmoil. All right. 
just want to make an announcement that the company printer paper and ink are to be used for work-related printing activity only. The mass printing of unauthorized, embarrassing childhood photos should be done in one's own time with one's own materials. Dennis, nobody's pointing fingers at you, but I'd like you to take special notice of this announcement. Regards, Leo. Can anybody help move my things out of my apartment this weekend? I hate that place. The neighbors are loud. The walls smell like asparagus. The windows keep opening on their own after sundown. And the floorboards click creak when nobody's home. Also, tell me if you know of anybody who's looking for a place to rent. I'm looking for a sublet. Don't mention the asparagus thing. <laughs> Free guacamole. Due to clerical error, we're inundated with guacamole. Come get some before it seeps out the door. Bring your own bucket and shovel. Visit Office 213, or alternatively, follow the smell. Alright. Some of them are clever. Some of them are just too negative. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is all just flavor text. But if by chance any of them are real, I don't know. But yeah, 1207. It's enough for me to acquire one more thing into our catalog. Maybe. If I'm lucky. Yeah, ramen would be beautiful, but can't afford it. Uh, wok dish. Oh, it's just barely in budget, but it creates all these problems for us, so let's dodge that for now. Even though it does bring in a lot of money. Um, huh. Dessert shooters. Dessert shooters are miniature desserts traditionally served in shot glasses. Although the conceptual or origin of dessert shooters is unknown, it's believed that dessert shooters uh, were created by the U.S. government in the mid-1990s as a response to the rising rates of obese and otherwise unhealthy American citizens. As desserts are often high in calories, sugar, and fats, which coincidentally are considered very delicious, Americans began eating larger and larger portions of desserts, leading to higher health risks nationwide. With limited knowledge of the reason for this sudden decline in health uh, nationwide, and even more limited knowledge of how to deal with it, the government determined that eating several smaller portions of desserts would be significantly healthier than eating one larger portion of equal nutritional value. The plan, fi the plan failed at first, but the popularity of dessert shooters couldn't be stopped, and eventually were eaten three at a time instead of by the dozen, leading the government to claim their efforts were a victory in the long run. Yeah, it looks kind of beautiful, but I think it could, there's better looking dishes out there. Oh, let's get some to-go foods. Party foods would allow us to do party events, to-go foods, fried chicken. So this creates trash. Oh, having too many unhealthy foods will cause people to balk at your recipe or your stuff. Uh, but customers do love their fried chicken. Um, so I'm debating fried chicken. What other to-go things could we get? Smoothies. Uh, not in price range. Specialty donuts. Trash, menu rot. Yeah, I'm looking for something that doesn't have menu rot. Um, ice cream scoops. There's a lot of green things. And a lot of red things. Uh, goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm trying to find something that's not hell to make. This has a lot of green things on it. Dirty Pest Fast Cooker. Uh, Japanese Crate. This is a staple, so people like it. Cold Treats Dessert Classic to Go Instant Food. Nice. Um, although crepes have enjoyed a good run as popular food across the globe, the Japanese Crate further improves the original formula by filling them with sweet or savory ingredients and rolling the pastry into a cone to turn crepes into a pop, uh, popular mobile street food. Because of the change in design, the Japanese crepe has begun to overtake the popularity of the traditional crepe, leading many proud French chefs to step up their game 
in the effort to swing the pendulum of popular opinion back to their side. Many have even experimented further with grapes um, to compete with Japanese grapes, including removing the pastry and adding small edible GIPS trackers as a way to geotag delicious grapes. A move targeting youths unfamiliar with the dish. None of these ideas have yet to take off like the Japanese crepe has. Well, let's practice Japanese crepe. Is this, like, extremely hard to prepare or something? Okay, whip. Oh my gosh. Bananas. Nuts. Raspberries. Whipping top. Okay, I messed up. Whip. Chocolate. Raspberries. Chocolate scoop. Why are they not happy? Whip. Chocolate bits. Oh, after the placing the ingredients, fold and roll three times. Oh, I see. Raspberries. Strawberries. Vanilla scope. Scoop. Uh, how do we fold... Oh, F to fold. There we go. That's how you're supposed to do it. Kiwi, strawberry. And then we fold and roll it. And hope that we get all the right ingredients. Um, whipping top. Alright, I'm not sure I fully get this. Maybe I do get it. It's kind of tricky. Um, actually that's extremely tricky. I don't know, I mean there are harder dishes to prepare. It is an instant prep thing. Um... Yeah, add two or more desserts to get a bonus. Cold treats. So there's all kinds of bonuses involved with this. But, um... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's just too much to think about. So I should pick something easier. Unhealthy. Yeah, to go all-time classic. Yeah, let's let's get fried chicken. Unless it's like super hard to prepare, but I can't imagine why. Uh Dunk. Uh Wait. Hang on. We want to get this Originating from both Scotland and West Africa, fried chicken has been a staple of American cuisine commonly found in dishes around the world. The West Africans had traditions of seasoning chicken that were fried in palm oil. The Scotch, or Scottish were the first to deep fried chicken in fat. Prior to the Second World War, fried chicken was considered an upscale dish that was very expensive and only enjoyed in special occasions. When the soldiers returned home from the war, they were disheartened by what they thought, what they experienced, and sought to make the world a better place. After realizing that fried chicken might be the remedy they sought, former soldiers took to mass-producing fried chicken, thus bringing the price down so everyone could enjoy it. Today, with fried chicken affordable and abundant, the world is indeed a better place. Alright. Uh... Oops. Alright, helps if I, like, prepare what they're asking for. Uh, I am not at all doing a good job at preparing what they're asking for. Also, I just served that dish before it was ready. Whatever. I think I could figure this out. Let's try it. Let's go back to our tower. Um, got fried chicken. Um, I'll 
better soda fountain back. Not storms, whatever. All right. Yeah, if you're consuming that many, like it defeats the point of like having them in that portion size. Oh, that's right. Um. Station two. Station three. German pretzels. Station four. Classic pretzel. Alright, be patient while we're preparing your food. Oh, I see. The red HS that's on the food indicates that it is being prepared on a holding station. It's just waiting would get the customer their food instead of me having to prepare it specifically. Okay, thigh, 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 rest. There we go. Yeah, I think this might be the uh, final day. And then we might take a break after this. But I guess the other positive aspect of the dessert shooter, even if you're eating it in such a large quantity, it allow you to sample multiple desserts instead of having much larger um, portion sizes. But, I mean, you could just manage portions on your own. Alright. Yep, reading the instructions helps. to do holding station two. I always mess that up. Well, that's gonna make it harder to get... No, there's no way we can get a long enough combo to unlock all the... all of today's unlockables. That's unfortunate. check if I've got any... I don't think I've been invited to play my match on the teaching ladder just yet. Nope. Still waiting on an invitation. So at some point I will be playing um, games and then reviewing those games afterward. Uh, at least that's the plan. That plan might change though, because this weekend I believe is a holiday. So I need to get that. Well, I could manage the game during the week sometime, I suppose. Ah, so much to think about. There's always so much to think about. It is nice when things just work. Holding station one. Holding station one. 
Alright, and then we prepare some more eggs. Holding station four. Holding station four. Apparently people like classic pretzels quite a lot. Okay, station two used to have macaroni. So let's put some more macaroni out there. I still find it amusing how you have to kick the trash into the bin to compact it. Only because, like, that seems so not sanitary. But maybe I'm spoiled. Oh, we might get a 15 combo today if we have three more customers. And if I don't mess up any more orders. It could happen. Wouldn't bet I'm getting three more, but, you know. It might happen. Alright, bye. Drumstick. Done. And then just don't accidentally serve it before it's done cooking. Like I keep doing time and time again. Alright. Drumstick. Nice and simple. But yeah, the flavor text is honestly one of the best parts of the game. Not that the rest of the game is bad in any way, but just so much creativity went into this flavor text. I don't think I could replicate such a thing. Alright. Now, to be clear, I am playing in Zen mode, which means the customers are extremely patient. Doesn't mean they put up with bad food, but they're not pushing me to deliver the food before it's ready. So, I'm thankful for that. Because that deals with one of the larger issues about this game that's just... Um, it's just such a chore. I mean, I know this game is a simulation in chores, but still, the notion that like there's all these timers forcing you to act faster it was kind of appealing in the original game, but this game is more challenging, it requires more focus. So that's why I play it in Zen mode. Now maybe the contest kitchens are not quite as complex. Oh nice, we did level up. Which I guess will offer us something. I know when we hit level 1 we have the ability to start decorating our restaurant. And we see I've taken full advantage of that. Um, it occurs to me this game, well, it almost could be fun to do as like a chat-driven simulation, but one, there's too many timing-related factors, and two, um, online chat rooms, um, like people will duplicate each other's messages. Which would kind of break the game. So you'd have to do it more like uh, some of the Pokemon uh, chat games were done. Table decor. Oh! Anime Lady A. Whatever. 
Mounted wall light. That one looks okay. It doesn't really stand out. Another uh, wall light. Oh, here's a table with a cloth on it. Doesn't look bad. A wall object that's just a California plate. A standard trash can. Beautiful. Yep, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. No, I'm sorry, it says pizza, actually. Um, not sure why. I guess in that era. Um, yeah, no chat interaction to, like, everything is key, everything's letter-driven in this game. Except for the holding station where you have to hold the tab key and press the number. I'm sorry, and then there's the recipe, like, serving people, you have to hit the numbers. But you could drive the entire game from a keyboard, but... It's, like, super impractical to do via chat. Um, so, we got some historical items from our mail. Uh, oh, we can actually take a picture of it. I mean, beautiful as that is. Let's continue creation first. Seating art. Wait. Create counter seating art objects. Booth dividers, seasonal fountains, furniture, standard. I guess standard objects? No. Booth dividers, plants. No plants. We don't have any. We're using the only column that's available. Um, we've got the seasonal objects already. Um. Yeah, we just don't have a lot of special objects to decorate with. I thought we had some odd decorative art things. Wall art other. Yeah, now those aren't our California plates, it's our historical. There we go. That's the category I was looking for. So you have a French horn. Um, stick that on the wall. Xbox, and <laughs> we have video game controllers. Alright, um... Well, they are hoping we find a decorative place for this, but... Looks a bit hard. Oh, that could work. Alright. Oh wait, that takes it off the wall. But, yeah, we got some game controllers there. Um, so where was this that we could exit designer, grid mode, time of day, create, oh, screenshot. Nice. So if I want to print screen, I've now captured it. All right, well, that was beautiful. Uh, uh, it actually does look better without that on the wall. You're right. I accidentally removed the controllers from the wall, but it didn't look that nice anyway. So, um, yeah, to delegate all the actual gameplay to uh, viewers, it'd be kind of impossible to do, but amusing to think about. Found in the rubble of San Francisco, California, these controllers were once the only way to play and enjoy and enjoy video games of the time before neural controllers became the norm. Those games included Darkest Hour, Mad Coin Collect, Drive-In Country, and of course, Mystical Landings and the Use Rats. Yeah, nice. Alright, okay guys, this is getting insane. There's no conceivable reason the project should have become the highest funded campaign of all time, but humanity disagreed and the results show. Now that the campaign's over, you can bet we'll be working on developing the Lost of Labor full-time. I'm excited to announce that we've raised enough money to surpass our stretch goals, purchase a tropical island without a nation, to be used as our office headquarters without limitations such as labor laws, and hire a crack team of the best minds and hearts in the world to make this dream come true. This is truly an overwhelming experience, and we've got you all to thank. Also, even though the campaign is over, you can now continue to donate to the Lost of Labor on the official website. With your donations, there's no limit on where this train can go. Out with the old, Team Turbo. 
Hi, one. As you might have heard, one of our environment artists, Thomas, was fired today. His thrice daily trips to the bathroom were disappointing and frankly unsustainable for the business. I don't care if you got type 1 diabetes, because now you got type 1, get the hell out of my office. When we're not looking for another environment artist, we're going to be accepting applications for our new Environment All-Stars internship program and at fostering young developers. Successful applicants won't be paid, but they will earn valuable experience and a first-hand look at the inner workings of AAA games. If anyone knows of any suitable candidates, please don't hesitate to email me. Best Brett, founder and director of Team Turmoil. Hot lighting. I'd like to make known that I find it very, very odd that we're having electrical problems with the lights above my desk and only my desk. They were fine when I left the office last night after working overtime to get a project done. If this is indeed a shenanigan as I suspect is, I'd like to let the perpetrator know that the honorable thing to do would come forward to me or his, her superior immediately. Regards, Leo. Hello, underlings. Stress is a killer. If you're the type of person who read that sentence and nodded your head in agreement, Get out of the office right now and never come back. Stress is fuel. Stress is motivation. Stress is having HR tell you this unethical and prone to lawsuit to fire Brenda in a humiliating and public fashion for my own amusement. That is to say, stress should only motivate you to try harder. Now, despite how right I am about all this, HR has insisted I send this email giving you some positive reinforcement for your good work and suggest ways that you can reduce stress. You're doing an adequate job. If you don't want to feel so much stress, you should work harder to get your job done so you have enough time and money to buy an island where you can retire forever. There. I hope you feel better now. Stop bothering me. Robert Overling, CEO. I mean, some of these things are, like, over the top. They really don't need to be done. Oh. Alright. Welcome back, chess fan. Yep. Good to see you, too. So, yeah, this game is pretty weird. Um, I mean, some of the stories in this game are, like, way, way over the top. But, uh, we do the best we can with it. So. Um, yeah, I guess that'll do it for now. Hope we all enjoyed this. Probably won't be playing it again for a while, because, like, it takes a while to play. It's challenging to play. Even despite me sticking it in Zen mode to, like, make it as unstressful as possible. The game, by its very nature, is designed to be stressful, so... Yeah, I'm really hoping the sequel is more lighthearted. I mean, I appreciate, like, I haven't even done the main game mode. Like, here we see, you can go serve food at all these other places, too. And you have all these challenges, and it's very achievement-driven. And that's great if you like challenges and achievements. And, I mean, I like achievements. I, I like meaningful challenges. I'm not sure that, like, this it does it for me. I'd rather maybe watch somebody play these things than do it myself. So, like, an auto, a demo mode, where, like, I don't earn anything, but it could just show off what an amazing game this is. I'd appreciate if there were such a demo mode. I think that would complement the game quite nicely. I do like that I could decorate the place. So we got our Halloween tree, our Christmas tree, we got our French horn, our fish, our hubcap, and this giant pink pillar that's here for no reason. Oh, and of course this parasol, whatever this thing's called. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So. Oh well, we tried. We tried so hard. This is a good game, but there's just... I wish it were a lot easier. Uh, I wish I could see everything that's in it, as opposed to, have to, as opposed to having to unlock everything. Uh, loot crates, as popular as they are, aren't really a good practice. Even though they're popular, it, it just slows the game down. Um, but anyway, hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.